So we're going to be chatting about osteoporosis. It's um, a huge topic, and I feel like I've studied it quite a bit, but there are people who are really, this is their life's work. But I think there's a ton that I can share with you, kind of the history of what we're thinking in terms of movement, what are we talking about when we're talking about osteoporosis, and why we worry about the things we do worry about with it, so that you can really um, help these people stay safe and get stronger and help them um, live just better, better, safer lives. And I think it's something that is really underestimated in a lot of fitness professionals, I think, are not aware enough about what they should and shouldn't do with osteoporosis. So here are just some images of what a normal bone looks like versus an osteoporotic bone, right? So you can see that that matrix is opened up and there's a lot of space between the pores in the bone compared to what a normal bone should look like. So that's why the bone becomes more fragile or is more fragile. So exercise program requirements. Here would be great things that you want to do for sure with somebody who has osteopenia or osteoporosis. So walking for bones and muscles three to five times a week for 40 minutes. That could be running too if, if running is actually even more effective. But thinking of, if we're thinking about people over 65, there aren't a whole, the average is not going to want to run. The average will be able to walk. So three to five times a week for 40 minutes. So that is to help grow bone, right? To help with that remodeling in the bones. And we can make this even better for them if, we, if they're actually walking on hard surface with hard sole shoes, right? Because we talk, I talked briefly about the fact that it's the vibration in the bones that makes the bones want to remodel. So if you're walking on really hoka, you guys know the hokas, big cushy shoes, big cloud-like shoes on soft trails all the time. While it's good, it's not creating the vibration that you could be getting if you were walking in a, like a clog on a street. You're gonna get a lot more vibration in the bone. Then the problem, you run into this problem of joint health versus bone health. So if there's any joint issues, we want them on the cushy shoes on the cushy surface. If there's osteoporosis as an issue, we want them on the hard shoes on the hard surface. So you have to figure out, hopefully most of them don't have joint issues and you can say, you know, walk, go for a walk in the neighborhood for 40 minutes in your clogs um, and then go hike the trails too. Go, do more, hey, great, you know. But, but you also want to take into consideration if their joints can handle that or not. So I had missed going over the planks and plank series last time. So I thought I would start there and then we'll go ahead to Cadillac, which is the piece that we were also missing. We were talking about all the reformer work. Our emphasis has been on trying to load the body, load the spine properly and keep the spine safe at the same time. So the plank series is one of those which I think is really good for, for a lot of reasons. One is that we're weight bearing through the arms and wrists. So somebody with fracture risk at the wrist, this is a great exercise to load the wrist if they can handle it. If they can't handle the pressure on the wrist initially, you can also modify. I'll show you those modifications as well. So for the plank series, I generally go to one red, one yellow spring. You could load it to a red and a blue spring for somebody who's larger or heavier because the, the work is actually the coming in motion on the plank series. So here I will start. Uh, the elephant is the flat-footed position here. So here we have the question of whether or not rounding the back is safe or not in this position. Instead of forcing a really round in the spine, what I do is I have them shift their weight back and pull the belly right up towards the spine in this position and really focus on the stomach, the arm reach wrist position. So if I'm doing this properly on these elephants, there's not a lot of pressure through my wrist and my wrist is in a really neutral position. And that's really key is keeping the wrists in the neutral position is a big key to the success of this whole series. All right, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. Dana. Yeah. Very cool. Uh -huh.